So today I wanted to build a little bit on the last training that I did where we talked about the different life cycle methods in a React component and just add a, um, a really simple example of how to call an API. So all of the code for this is available on the Atomic Jolt GitHub website. It's under daily training and I'll post a link to it um, when we post the video to YouTube. Okay, so um, when we last left, we had this component. It was fairly simple. Uh, it has these empty lifecycle methods in it. Uh, it sets an initial state of initial text, which gets rendered down here in the render method. And if you look at this component, it's nothing beautiful, but there's that initial text being rendered out of the state. Here's an image rendering, and here's a, an input box, and here's a button. All right, so first off, I'm gonna clean up some of this and get rid of some of the things from last time. I'm just gonna dump the image and some of this text, uh, just because we're not gonna use it today. Get rid of the button, uh, simplify the component down just a little bit. So our initial state is just going to be empty. Now, when we talked about the lifecycle methods last time, I think I mentioned that it's pretty common to use component wheel mount if you need your component to get data from an API in order to render. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Uh, if you pull down this project, note that we're using Redux and there's a whole bunch of other code, but for, this is, for the sake of today's tutorial, you can just ignore all that. We're not gonna use Redux, we're not gonna use Relay, we're just gonna call the APIs directly. All right, so in order to do that, we need um, a library. Uh, we've already installed it into the project, it's called SuperAgent. So I can do just an import, I'm going to call it request, maybe I'll call it request, request from super agent. All right, if you are doing this from scratch, you would just go to the command line and to install super agent into the project. You would just do npm install um, and then do dash dash save dash, or just save, and then do super agent. And that would, oh no, I pushed it anyway. That'll install it into the project. Uh, NPM's pretty simple to use, so whenever you need to add a new library, you can do it that way. All right, so that's the first step, is just grabbing a library to use to make the API call. There are other libraries. We typically use super agent. Um, you can also use fetch. Uh, you could probably use jQuery, although I don't, I don't recommend it because it'll come with the entire jQuery library unless you want to take it apart and just include the Ajax components. But uh, the, the selection of which library you use is entirely up to you. Uh, we just like to use SuperAgent, and you'll see why here in a second. It's very, very simple to use. Okay, so now the next piece is actually making the query. So inside a component will mount, we're going to add a little bit of code here to make the query. So. I've got um, URL for an API. We're going to use the uh, movie database, the open movie database API. Um, they have cores enabled, which allows us uh, to call into their API from our client application. There are a lot of APIs available on the web, um, but most of them, well, some of them, I don't know if most or I, I don't know what percent, but only some have cores enabled. So cores stands, for, it's capital C-O-R-S. Um, it's spelled like this. And you'll see that around the web. It stands for, for cross-origin resource scripting. and allows you to make calls from a client to a server where the client did not originate from that server. So this, in our case, if you look at the client, we're going to be originated from localhost. It could be anything, example.com, um, google.com, whatever. Whatever this domain is, um, it's just critical to note that it's not going to be the domain that we call. So this URL right here is going to be omdbapi.com. Okay. So we clearly can't up upload our code to omdbapi.com. It's going to have to run somewhere else. Lucky for us, um, omdbapi has enabled cores. And that tells the browser that this they will allow other clients to make API calls 
um, regardless of what domain they originate from. If um, Originally when I was putting this tutorial together I tried to use Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia does not have cores enabled and so you will get an error in the console if you attempt to contact their API. Um, so if you experiment with this and you play around with calling different APIs and you get uh, an error in your browser console that says something like uh, cross-origin scripting is not enabled for you know wikipedia.org or whatever then you'll know that um, you can't call them directly from your client code all right so having said that now we will look at the the one that does work okay so we need to be able to make a query um, s is the parameter they use for search so we're just going to hard code a search for star i would hope this would return star wars star trek um, any other movies with star in the title. Um, we're also going to give it a couple of other parameters here. Uh, just the Y you can just ignore. Um, they have their documentation online if you just go to omdbapi.com. Let's see, I think I have it up here somewhere. Yeah. Their documentation is pretty good. It's just here on the home page. They'll tell you all of the, the different parameters that you can send in. So we're running this search query. We'll send an S to do the search. Uh, y would be the year of release, and we're just not going to care about the year of release. Uh, the response type we will care about, we're going to ask for JSON. So um, we want to do R equals JSON. I think. Um, let's also just ask for plot equals short because we don't care about getting the entire plot. This will reduce the amount of traffic over the wire. Okay, so now having specified our URL, uh, we should be able to actually make the API call. So we have this request request uh, that we imported from SuperAgent. And I can just call request.get. So SuperAgent is really quite nice, very simple to use. This will get these get the URL that we specified. It will return a promise. So I can do it then, and then I'm going to use an arrow function here. So uh, this will get the response object, and now I can do something with it. Okay. So the cool thing is, is um, since I used an arrow function, I can use this inside of this anonymous function right here. And the this right here will refer to this component. It'll refer to the class. So it handles all that binding for me. I don't have to bind this to the function, which is nice. All right, so I can do this.setState, and I can tell it to set maybe movies to be the response. Okay, we're going to need to work on this a little bit because um, we don't actually want movies to be a response, but we don't yet know what the response object looks like, so we'll just go ahead and make this API call um, and let it go with that. Uh, by calling set state, this will cause the component to re-render. So remember, when we call component wheel mount, that's at the moment, well, right before the component is going to be rendered into the page, it's going to call component wheel mount. So this will kick off this API request, but then this is asynchronous. It returns a promise. And so sometime later on, whenever the server on the other end gets around to returning data, this function will be called. But this function is going to be asynchronous. It's not going to be called synchronously. So um, setting the state here will cause the render method to fire again. Um, it will actually also call uh, component will update as well, I think. Yeah, because we're setting state, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it'll call component will update because we're going to change the state. So this will change the state, which will result in this guy being called. Uh, component will receive props will not be called. Okay, um, so let's take a look at this. Uh, we're not actually going to render the data. We just want to see what it looks like. So if I go over to my page, you can see I just have this empty text box. We're going to go into the code, which is home JSX. should be able to see the results of, of making this API call. So I need to refresh. Okay, let's put a breakpoint right there, and then we can take a look at this response All right, so there's our breakpoint. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we have this response object, and it looks like that. 
So this is um, really nice whenever you're debugging whatever browser you decide to use. Uh, we tend to prefer Chrome. Uh, you can use your debugger and use it to view data that comes back from the API. Um, I could, I could, and usually do, just read their documentation and take a look. But um, this is also a pretty convenient way to take a look and see what a response object looks like. Okay, so the, the response that we're gonna, the part of the response we're gonna be interested in is the body. So the body is already gonna be parsed because we know that this was a JSON request, um, and so Super Agent will. Make sure that the body is already turned into a JSON object for us. And you can see here's this search with an array. It tells me that we have a total of 2,660 results. So if I look inside of this um, search object, I can see here are the individual movies. Okay, so I probably actually don't want to set my state to be the response because the response is going to be this whole big thing up here. We are probably going to be more interested in just the search bar. So let's go do that. So if I switch over to my code, I can ask for response.body.search. That will give me um, the, an array of the movies. And then I can also ask for um, the total results, because that might also be an interesting bit of information. So that's going to be data.body.totalResults. OK. <clears throat> so now we have this data available for us inside of the state. I can go down to my render method. And let's put the movies below this text box right here. And now I can do um, a lodash method here. So I need to go and import lodash. Let's do that really quickly. All right, and we're going to call map. And we're going to do it on this.state.movies. So for each one of those movies, we are going to turn it into another um, React component here. So let's just return, um, let's make this movie, not movies, movie.title. And we have to make that into code that's executable. All right, so then let's put this into an unordered list like that. All right, so now when this renders, the first time through, uh, movies will be undefined, which is fine because then the movies variable that we declare will also be undefined and nothing will be rendered. But then after this API call returns, um, we'll be able to iterate over those movies and output the title from each one of them. So let's go take a look at our code here. Let's refresh this page. And let's try it again. Looks like we might have an error. Um, oh, I cannot spell apparently. From, from, there we go. And let's see, data is not defined. Oh, because it's called response, sorry. Response stop body, my bad. There we go. So you can see here are 10 movies that all have the word star in their title that were returned from the uh, movie database. All right, so that's interesting, but we hard coded the query. So let's use this text box that we have sitting here and let's let the user type in any query that they like. So now I've got this input right here. Um, it's called text box. I'm going to change the ref to query just because that makes more sense in this context. And then whenever that changes, uh, we are going to have it call a function. And then we can call this dot um, search. Or let's call it update search. All right, so now let's go write this update search method. All right, so update search is going to use this dot refs dot query. Um, that's how it'll get a hold of the data from this input. 
and then we want its value. Actually, I think it's val. No, it is value. Um, but now we want to put that value into this URL, and we want to rerun this query. So you can see we hard-coded star up here. So let's refactor this little piece of code and move it off into its own method. Um, so right down here, we're going to create a method called search. It's going to take a query, and because we are using some of the new ES6, and we have Webpack to transpile our code, we can add a default value, which is also very nice. And we're just going to set the v default value to star like it was before. All right, so now I can go extract this code out of here, and I'll be able to just call search. I don't even have to give it a parameter because we're just going to use that default value that we specified in the method. Okay, so now we've got this search method. I need to change this guy based on this query. So we're going to use string interpolation, which means if you use little back ticks, then when this code is transpiled, it will take care of inserting the strings into the correct location so that you don't have to put plus all over the place. So the way that we'll do that is dollar sign and then the curly bra brackets, uh, put query in there. And so now this will change based on the query that's specified. Um, we'll make that request and we'll still set the state to whatever is returned based on this response. Okay, so now in our update search method here, we just need to call search. So we can call this search and the value we're going to give it is the value that was specified in the input box. Save that. And let's go see if we did this correctly. Looks like I must have typed something wrong once again. Oh. It has to be this.search. There we go. Okay. All right, so there's our original values. Um, you can see that it's still running that default query when the page loads. And now if I come over here and I type new query, you can see that it will return results for that new query. So whenever this input box changes, my search method will be called, and we rerun the query, and luckily the server on the other end is pretty fast, so you don't even really see things um, change, but, well, you don't really have to wait for anything. Um, but you can see that whatever I type, if you type one character, I'm guessing their API probably doesn't like that, and probably just rejects it. Um, but I can, See if there's any movies and foo. I guess there's a whole bunch of kung fu, foo fighters, whatever. Anyway, um, so that's basically it. That's how you would call an API directly from a component. Uh, again, frequently you're going to use a framework um, like Redux or Flux or Relay or something else that's going to handle a lot of this stuff for you in the background. But if your project is fairly simple, and you don't really feel like you need to share data between your components, then this solution is perfectly acceptable in those cases. You can just let this one component handle its own data. Um, and you can see that we took input from the user and we changed the search. And in some circumstances, you might take input from a user and actually update your database. Again, that would be fine. And instead of calling um, request.get like we did down here, you would call request.get put or request.post, depending on if you're doing um, a new record or an up update record. All right, that's it. Are there any questions? Okay.